Um, so I'm an academic clinical lecturer in infectious diseases and microbiology at Cambridge. I did my uh, PhD research fellowship with Gordon Dugan at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute, and I'm going to present the key findings from that research and what that has led on to. So a bit of background, uh, typhoid fever is a disease caused by a gram-negative bacterium, Salmonella typhi. It's human-restricted, it only affects humans, and it's spread by the fecal-oral route. Um, so you contract typhoid by ingesting uh, contaminated water. This picture always very disturbs me greatly. Um, and also contaminated food. And then you shed the bacteria in the feces. That goes on to contaminate other water and food. And the lovely cycle continues. Um, Typhoid continues to be a global health problem. Um, the global incidence of typhoid is about 20 to 30 million cases per year. The rate is much higher in countries with poor sanitation and limited access to clean drinking water. Uh, the mortality rate varies, but it can be up to 10% if you do not treat it. If you treat it and the pathogen is susceptible to the antibiotic, you can reduce the mortality rate to less than 1%. Typhoid is very difficult to eradicate. Um, for a number of reasons, and one of those reasons is asymptomatic carriage. So 1 to 6% of people carry typhoid in their gallbladder, they continue to shred it, to shed it, and they're called um, asymptomatic carriers, chronic carriers. And many of you have probably heard the story of typhoid Mary. Um, she was the first uh, person in the US to be identified as an asymptomatic carrier of typhoid. And she um, basically was a cook in the New York area between 1900 and 1915. And during that time, infected more than 50 people with typhoid, three of whom died. In addition to that, there are multi-drug resistant strains of typhoid circulating in parts of, sort of Southeast Asia, South Asia, as well as parts of Africa. So how do you track salmonella in the field? Well, there are various ways. Um, and the main aim being um, to try and group organisms um, in a meaningful way to see how they're related. Um, and this is very useful because it allows us to see whether they come from the same source. For example, are they from the same outbreak? So clinical reference laboratories, um, clinical micro-reference laboratories around the world use various methods such as serotyping, phage typing, and pulse field gel electrophoresis. Um, and they're very useful. However, they are not genotyping um, methods. They do not provide any phylogenetic um, information or um, genotypic characteristics um, of the isolates. Multilocal um, sequence typing, so MLST, is a genotyping method. Um, and that is based on gene DNA sequences within seven housekeeping genes of the isolate, but it's not very useful for typhi. And that's because typhi has a very stable genome with very little genetic variation. And so you actually only get two major groups if you use MST typing. So that's where SNP-based typing and whole genome sequencing comes into play for typhi. It provides phylogenetic um, information and is much better in terms of resolution. So what you do is you take your collection of salmonella typhi isolates and you map them to a reference genome, and that produces a variation map. And this variation map is based on single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs. And this allows you to build an a history of evolution, or phylogeny, over time based on those SNPs. And this, will, this allows you to type the typhi, or type any isolate really for that matter, um, it allows you to track transmission, look at transmission pathways, and look at the spread of epidemics within countries and between countries as well. So Rumanac in 2006, um, he classified typhi based on SNPs found in 200 gene fragments from a globe collection of typhi. And every time he found a new SNP, he allocated it an, a haplotype. So he ended up with H1, H2, H3, and so on. And he ended up with 85 haplotypes. And that is currently how Typhi is classified today. So as part of my uh, project, we gathered over 1,800 salmonella Typhi isolates, um, gener generously donated by um, 74 collaborators around the world from 63 different countries. And the countries are highlighted here on the map. And what did we get? So this is the global population structure of Salmonella typhi. Um, and the things to point out are um, there is a lot of geographical clustering. So you've got Southeast Asia, sort of red, brown here, Africa in blue, South Asia in pink, and yellow, golden is Oceania. The other thing to point out is that actually half of the tree is made up of H58. Um, and this haplotype is important because it causes multidrug resistant disease. And the geographical clustering within H58 is very tight indeed. 
So we specifically focused our analysis on H58, um, because as I said, it causes MDR disease and is associated with MDR outbreaks in parts of Asia and Africa. Um, and it formed a very distinct, so this red cluster here, distinct dominant lineage of isolates. It makes up more than half the isolates in our global tree and has just basically recently shown global expansion covering 21 different countries in parts of Asia, Africa, Oceania, and the Middle East. And very interestingly, this particular lineage has a unique set of non-synonymous SNPs, about 44 SNPs, and over a third of those SNPs are found in genes associated with pathogenicity or virulence. And this may underlie um, its success. We did some phylogeographical analysis, and we found that this particular MDR lineage emerged from South Asia probably about 30 years ago, and that South Asia acted as a hub by which H58 was disseminated to multiple locations around the world. So you've got West A um, West A Western Asia here, you've got East Africa here, and also Southern Africa here, as well as Southeast Asia, and as far as obviously um, Oceania with Fiji over here. The other thing that we identified was an ongoing epidemic of MDR typhoid across Africa. We showed that it was introduced from Southeast Asia into Kenya, and then from Kenya onto Tanzania, and from Tanzania onto Malawi, and also <coughs> South Africa. And the clinicians on the ground confirmed this as well. They were seeing an enormous amount of um, a surge in MDR typhoid cases around this time as well. So what are the mechanisms of drug resistance in salmonella typhi? Well, there are two main mechanisms. The first is that they harbor a multi-drug resistant plasmid called INC-HI1. This plasmid contains a repertoire of um, resistance genes which sits on a transposon. And in that transposon, there are resistance genes to these three antibiotics, chlorophenicol, ampicillin, and septrin, cotrimoxazole. And it's resistant to these three agents that define the clinical MDR phenotype for typhoid. The second mechanism is chromosomal mutations. So you can get SNP mutations in the gyrase and PAR genes. These genes are involved in relaxing DNA during re replication. And this gives you resistance to quinolones and fluoroquinolones, such as ciprofloxacin, levo, and moxifloxacin. And if you map the plasmids, as well as the gyrase mutations to the global tree, you can see that H58 has a high rate of both these drug-resistant genotypes compared to the rest of the tree. The other interesting thing um, that I got very excited about was that I noticed that um, a lot of the isolates had lost their INC HI1 plasmid. It wasn't present. Um, but they still maintained the resistance genes. So the question was, where, where were these resistance genes? And actually, we found in the H58 lineage that the isolates um, basically had the capability of the transposon that normally sits on the plasmid jumping into the chromosome. And we actually found three sites within the chromosome that the transposon had, that was sitting on the plasmid had actually jumped from the plasmid and inserted itself into the chromosome. And this is very interesting because it means that H58 isolates have the ability to lose the plasmid but maintain the clinical MDR phenotype. And perhaps this confers a fitness benefit. So how can you use this data practically? How is it useful practically? For the last five to six years, there have been ongoing outbreaks of typhoid in the Pacific Islands. And the um, divisional lead of the WHO and the Ministry of Health from, Sam from Samoa and Fiji got in contact with us, and they donated these isolates for us to hold genome sequence so they can get a better understanding of what was going on um, with these outbreaks. So what did we find, and what were we able to tell them? Well, we were able to tell them, if you map um, the isolates on the global tree, that the outbreaks of typhoid were actually very island-specific. So you have Papua New Guinea here in yellow, uh, Samoa in blue, and Fiji in green. And although there was some element of inter-island transfer, such as Fiji and Papua New Guinea here, and Fiji and Samoa here, as well as Tonga and Fiji, this was actually quite limited, which was very surprising given the amount of frequent travel between the Pacific Islands. So we were able to say, the outbreak in Samoa was not due to imported typhoid from Papua New Guinea, and you couldn't focus your efforts on one particular island, and any public health intervention that you would undertake would have to be very island-specific. The other thing they were very worried about was the introduction or the presence 
of MDR typhoid. Um, is there any H58? And so we were able to confidently tell them from the isolates that they gave us that there was no H58 um, circulating. However, there were 11 isolates here from Fiji that were H58, but they were isolated in 1992 and 1994. So any contemporary isolates that we were given um, were, not, were not H58 and were not multi-drug resistant. And the reason they were worried about that was that in Samoa particularly, most patients get oral antibiotics in the community, and they explained that actually um, they, could, they did not have the infrastructure or the resources to cope with a multi-drug resistant outbreak um, where patients may require intravenous antibiotics, would have to be transferred from peripheral islands, um, flown to the main hospital on the main island. And so logistically, it was going to be very, very difficult for them. So this data formed the basis of an NIHR clinical research fellowship um, to basically develop a SNP genotyping assay to track typhoid in the field. So we've gone from Remanax um, low resolution subgenomic typing for typhi to high resolution whole genome sequencing. Um, and we basically have reclassified typhi into four primary clades, 16 clades and 49 subclades. Um, and this increased resolution will, will allow us to track typhoid in the field more accurately. So we have basically um, updated the scheme, and that's currently under review um, in Nature Communications. And we are working with Public Health England, obviously, in terms of this typing scheme. And we're going to test the assay in um, Vietnam with the Oxford University Clinical Research Unit. So this is ongoing at the moment. The other thing um, that's come out of this is um, the development of a surveillance program. So the typhoid data is being used as a framework for future surveillance of other pathogens um, with the Wellcome <coughs> Trust Global Health Research Centre. So I'm working with David Anderson from Imperial College to get the typhoid data um, onto a live interactive surveillance website. Um, it's called MicroReact. And this is basically a snapshot of the website. So on the right, you have the global tree. Um, and they're highlighted by country, and on the left you have the world map with uh, the corresponding locations of the isolates highlight, highlighted. Um, you can change the labels. You can choose country, year, whether they're H58, if you want to know which isolates have gyrase A mutations, and so forth. So it's very, very interactive. And the aim is for people to um, upload their new sequence data onto the tree, it will get incorporated, incorporated into the current global tree and build on the molecular epidemiology, and so it will be a continuous live updated surveillance program, which is accessible to everyone. So in summary, <coughs> um, we identified a single dominant multi-drug resistant lineage, H58. We found that it emerged about 30 years ago, most likely from Southeast Asia, and has spread across um, the world to 21 different countries. We identified an ongoing MDR epidemic of typhoid within Africa, specifically Eastern Africa down to Southern Africa. The global population structure of typhoid has led to the reclassification of typhi, and we're currently developing an assay for tracking transmission of typhi. Hopefully this information will facilitate public health measures, such as the introduction of vaccine programs looking for um, escape mutants, and perhaps facilitate um, basically policies in terms of implementation of water and sanitation services as well. And overall, I hope it provides a framework to facilitate the global management of MDR typhoid from not only providing local investigators with baseline genomic data from which they can base, increase, um, basically and build on their local um, studies, but also informing just clinicians um, whether they have MDR typhoid circulating in their area and basically allow them to make informed decisions about antibiotic choices in order to treat the disease. And I'd like to thank, um, to end by thanking Gordon Dugan, my uh, supervisor, um, a whole host of people at the Sanger Institute, all my collaborators um, who've generously donated uh, isolates and also the Wellcome Trust and NHR for funding. Thank you ever so much.